Hello, this is Mrs. Moore's video lecture on Communist China. We'll start with the Communist Revolution, which you should have your organizer and be recording this information on your organizer, starting with the Communist Revolution. As you can see on the screen, um, the Communist Revolution really came about after the end of the uh, dynastic period of time in China. The end of the great emperors ended around 1911, after thousands of years of being ruled by emperors. The last of China's royal dynasties were overthrown. A dynasty just simply means a long history of family rule. And over the next 15 to 20 years, uh, China was in chaos as different groups struggled to control the country. Um, by the 1930s, China had entered a period of civil war between two main political parties to determine who would control the country. Those two main political parties that were fighting for control was the Nationalist Party, who was led by Chiang Kai-shek, and um, they wanted more of a democratic government. The second political party fighting for control was the Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong. And of course, Mao wanted a communist government. After years of civil war, the Communist Party uh, ends up winning this fight, winning the civil war. And the nationalists end up uh, fleeing the country to the tiny island of Taiwan. In 1949, China becomes a communist nation, led by Mao Zedong. Now, Chairman Mao was the head of the Chinese Communist Party and leader of China's government. Um, the Ch Communist Party set all the government policies, giving Chairman Mao nearly absolute power. Mao set up the government to be more of a, almost like a cult, uh, where the people virtually worshipped Mao as you can see in this propaganda poster on the screen. The goal of communism um, is to make everyone as equal as possible, to have a classless society. There would be no private ownership of property, um, land, or businesses. Everything would be run by the government, like the factories, the schools, the hospitals. The government would provide jobs for everyone. Now this all sounds nice uh, in theory, except we know that communism uh, does not really work that way. The Chinese Communist Party took land from the wealthy and gave it to the poor. They took control over China's factories and businesses, determining what and how much should be produced. They forced the farmers to combine all their land together into collective farms or communes they were referred to and to work together to grow food. The idea was, was that everyone would work together and would be able to eat together. And of course, this sounds great to the majority of China's population at that time because they were peasants and they had very little <clears throat> in terms of their being able to farm, and they were mostly based at, on agrarian society, which is based on agriculture, and they were basically subsistence farmers. So the idea of being able to pool their land into these communes and to live together and to work together actually appealed to a lot of the people in China. So why does this all matter to, to us? Well, it is because China is still a communist nation uh, today. So after Mao took charge and was in control of China uh, under communism, he decided that he would put into place some of his great visionary programs. The first one was the Great Leap Forward in 1958. This was a program meant to speed up China's economic development. Mao wanted China's economy to 
be equal to that or to rival that of some of the Western nations, such as United States and Great Britain. And so Mao had this idea that all of the small farms would be combined into larger farms, um, as we, as I refer to them, uh, collective farms as communes. The farm and factory ownership and all the decisions, of course, were in the hands of the government. That's basically what communism does. Uh, goals or quotas were set for the farm and factory production. However, this was not what happened in reality. The Great Leap Forward was aimed to reform China's industrial production. And many of the peasants, regardless of their ability, were put to work on these large scale industrialized industrialization projects. Um, the plan also emphasized the use of small scale rural industry. The communes were expected to be self-sufficient, self-supporting, making their own tools and equipment from local material. The government urged commune members to build small backyard furnaces to produce steel and iron. Now, one of Mao's techniques for convincing everyone, uh, the Chinese people as well as the rest of the world, that everything was good in China, was through propaganda. You can see this propaganda poster here on the screen about how they were how Mao was trying to convince the people that they needed to produce more steel. That making steel was the key to becoming an industrialized nation. This is a picture of the backyard furnaces that were built to try to produce the steel. Unfortunately, the peasants, um, regardless of their ability, as I said, they really did not have the process uh, perfected for making steel. And they were melting down all of the tools that they had, their forks, their spoons, their pots, their pans, their plows, anything that was made of metal to try to produce steel. Mao thought that this was going to propel China into becoming one of the more richer, more powerful countries in the world. At the beginning, the commune members were able to eat for free at the commune dining hall. People were uh, working together and eating together, and they seemed to be self-supporting. Another picture of the backyard furnaces during this Great Leap Forward error. More of the furnaces that were to be making steel. And in the countryside where the people were working night and day trying to produce as much metal as possible, as much steel as they could. The problem was, was that the steel was defective. The steel would not, uh, wasn't of any great quality. It was of poor quality and was virtually useless. This was like a double-edged sword in terms of the people of China. They were not only not producing enough farm uh, production, food, but the steel that they were trying to produce was virtually worthless, um, as it turned out. This is another propaganda poster showing uh, life as it was supposed to be represented by the Chinese government, that they were very successful, that life was good. In this picture, these are more propaganda posters showing that the, they were producing so much wheat, it was just flying out of the fields. However, as I mentioned already, the steel that they made was not, um, was defective, and the farms and factories could not meet the quotas or the production goals set by the CCP or the Chinese Communist Party. 
Some of the workers lied about how much they made so that they uh, didn't upset their bosses, so that they did not have consequences. Um, most of the time, the consequences that they would have received would have been cutting their food rations, and this caused many people to um, die of starvation, widespread hunger. Uh, there was a three-year period of famine, and um, ultimately millions of Chinese people died. These are the pictures that were put in the Life magazine, as you can see in the corner here. These pictures were more accurate depiction of what was actually going on in China. Ultimately, Mao realizes that the Great Leap Forward was not quite the success that he was uh, hoping it would be, and so he retreated from the public view uh, because his plan uh, was failing. And unfortunately, he lost a lot of support from the people in China. Uh, he They wanted the government to put things back as they once were with the small farms, um, and they wanted the government to back out a little bit of some of the decision-making process that they were involved in. The Communist Party um, initially denied, of course, that there was a serious food problem. However, by 1961, it was uh, no longer could be denied. The Communist Party eventually um, put an end to the Great Leap Forward and uh, the aftermath was uh, devastating. Not It was not the Great Leap Forward that was, it was destined or supposed to be, as Mao predicted, but a giant step backwards. Uh, and Mao and his supporters lost a lot of political favor. Mao went on to launch his next new project, his next new vision, to try to regain some of the favor that he had, regain the power, and to enforce the strict communist principles. This new program was the Cultural Revolution, which was started in 1966. The Cultural Revolution was a program to increase support for and remove opposition to the Communist Party. Again, as I had mentioned, Mao had lost, and his followers had lost a lot of favor after the Great Leap Forward being such a disaster. So the Cultural Revolution was put into place to weed out those that were not as supportive for the Communist Party. Um, all, life, all parts of life were supposed to be up about communism. You were supposed to live, breathe, and practice communism this is the time when the Red Guard formed. Uh, the Red Guard was the kind of the enforcers that was usually, it was really promoted to the youth, the students, and they would patrol the area for uncommunist people. In other words, they would listen for comments made by people in the community that were less than um, favorited of the Communist Party. The Cultural Revolution was focused on bringing down the four olds. It was referred to as old customs, old culture, old habits, old ideas. This is a, a picture of the Red Guard pulling down a uh, archway, it says. The sad part about this period of time was that the China lost a lot of their ancient culture at this during this time period. It was um, very sad in the sense that a lot of their ancient history was lost. This is another uh, propaganda poster saying that we'll destroy the old world and build the new. Um, it depicts the worker crushing some of the old cultures. Uh, this was a time period when uh, Mao closed all of China's schools and encouraged the Red Guards to attack 
all of the traditional values um, and anyone that would publicly criticize them. Millions of students stormed through the cities and towns, harassing and uh, often physically attacking officials, intellectuals, teachers, and any others that were thought to not be fully committed to the revolutionary values. Uh, large numbers of people died. Uh, the resulting terror and chaos completely disrupted city life as well as urban industries. And China's economy suffered greatly. This is just another propaganda poster uh, talking about how they were going to conquer every stage. This is a picture of the book burnings that were frequent. Um, they would go into the towns and pull out the history books, anything to do with the old traditions, the old uh, religions, uh, the old practices, and as part of the intimidation, they would burn them uh, publicly in the streets. The Cultural Revolution, uh, the, result, the effects were, of course, that the Red Guard harmed a lot of people. Um, anything connected to the foreign ideas and the old Chinese ideas were destroyed. Uh, a lot of the intellectual people, the teachers, uh, the scholars, were sent out to the countryside to do hard work. Uh, people would tell on each other for crimes that were considered against communism. Mao was worried about the idea of his classless society disappearing and, of course, trying to regain his power and his control uh, and to increase support for the Communist Party was the cause of the Cultural Revolution. There were loose guidelines in determining what was considered old. Uh, of course, anything that existed before 1949 was subject to being destroyed. Anyone caught being in possession of old goods or sacred texts or religious writings uh, would suffer serious consequences from the Red Guards. The Cultural Revolution was a time of great chaos. Uh, again, many people were killed or committed suicide. Um, and this was, uh, again, a time period that the China's economy suffered greatly. Um, Mao began to disband the Red Guard in 1968 when he sent the young people to the countryside to work with China's farmers. Um, to regain greater control, Mao dispatched the military to take over the schools. After he died, um, there was more of order resumed, and a lot of the Chinese leaders and government officials decided that to really pro propel China's economy into the future was going to force them to allow for more private ownership of land and businesses. The Cultural Revolution officially ended in 1977 after leaving nearly 3 million people uh, purged from the Communist Party. Countless wrongful persecuted citizens were um, put in forced labor camps and the damages to the educational system took several decades to repair. The Cultural Revolution had harmful effects, again, on China's economy. But more importantly, it caused many of the Chinese to question their faith in communism. As a result, the Cultural Revolution helped to pave the way for greater openness towards the Western-style economy and political development. This openness Openness was exactly what Mao had hoped to prevent. After Mao died, um, there was another um, major event that took place in communist China, because even with Mao's death, communism uh, remained in China. 
This event was Tiananmen Square, which occurred in um, 1989. Tiananmen Square is the big open air market uh, plaza in front of the Imperial Palace, which is uh, a general place for people to gather. Um, major announcements would be uh, announced on the from the Imperial Palace in this uh, in this square. And basically, what happened was that students had begun to learn about what was going on in the rest of the world, and that bit of freedom and democracy was what they were interested in trying to protest for. The people wanted democracy and they wanted a little bit more of those personal freedoms. Um, thousands of soldiers though were called in uh, after the protest had gone on for several days and the military was forced to fire on the unarmed students. Uh, the students had built the statue of the goddess of democracy, which was uh, destroyed. Um, of course, the statue was resembling the Statue of Liberty from America. Um, thousands of people were arrested and many people were injured, uh, killed. This is showing the statue of the goddess of the democracy. And, uh, of course, the students had very little ways of defending themselves. Very famous picture came out of this uh, incident, and it's seen in this picture here. This gentleman was referred to as Tank Man. As you can see, it was one lone man standing up to the entire Chinese army, as it appears in this photograph. This really just kind of signified the overreaction of the Chinese government um, by the protesters. This picture was seen around the world, and the result of that was that it was um, brought to everyone's attention uh, around the world, United States included, that China was a communist country that did not treat their people with any humane way. Um, the cruelty of communism and the repression of the people. And although there is more freedom in China today, communism still controls people's lives um, in a very serious way in China. I hope that you were able to complete your organizer um, please make sure that you have it completed uh, because I'm sure that it will come in uh, handy when you uh, take a quiz next week. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.